go live in two minutes. any agenda items, but we do have a discussion topic. Um, we have a presentation on redistricting given by our South Carolina Revenue and Fiscal Affairs Office representative via a Zoom call. So we're going to try to Zoom this in and get started. All right, Catherine, we're getting ready to go. Can you hear us? Yep, we can hear you guys. Can you hear us okay? Okay, I can hear you, but i got to get you on video. All right. One second. All right, Catherine, we've got you, and uh, we've got the entire council of Easley here. Got some staff members, and we were eager to hear what you got to say. here at RFA and with me is Alan Anderson she's our cartographer she's gonna go through the benchmark report that was sent to you guys I think we sent it last year um, data should still be the same but uh, I know we haven't met and we haven't talked about it so um, she's gonna go through that she can answer any questions about the data and I can answer any questions about the process and, and moving forward and what RFA is able to do uh, to help you all, what your options are, that sort of thing. I know um, when I spoke with Tommy earlier today, I understand that most of you have not gone through redistricting before. So, you know, any questions you have, we'll, we will do our very best to answer them. Uh, that being said, I'm going to share the document. Um, and Alan will scroll through it as, you, as she talks through it. Uh, I'm assuming you all have a copy in front of you, but I don't want to assume too much. So uh, here we go. Okay, so um, this afternoon we're going to be talking about the benchmark report, which includes the 2020 census information, as well as constitutional and statutory provisions and the traditional redistricting principles. Um, if there are no questions, I'll begin. I think we're ready to go ahead. Okay. Um, starting on page two. Um, two of six at RFA, we recommend following constitutional and statutory provisions such as the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment requirement of one person, one vote, which ensures equal representation for each district, the Voting Rights Act, and other applicable court decisions and federal and state laws. Um, RFA also recommends the following traditional redistricting principles be considered, such as contiguousness, making sure all parts of individual districts are connected and touching with no gaps, um, minimizing voter precinct splits to help voter registration, making sure that the districts are compact so they are 
crazy zigzag areas um, and then following a lease changes which means just not moving a whole district to another area of your city um, completely like trying to do minimal changes to get to that one person one vote um, and then Going on to page three, the numbers in this um, report are based off the 2020 census received from the Census Bureau and your city, the city of Easley has increased 14.65% 14, 14 from 19,993 people to 22,921. And, um, the ideal district changed from 3,332 to 3,820. So your goal population for after redistricting would be to have around 3,820 people in each district. Uh, the benchmark report noted a deviation of 27.93%. And to get to this number, we take the highest deviation and the absolute value of the lowest deviation and then add them together. Um, please note that RFA recommends a 5% or lower deviation, but the maximum range that you can have is 10%. In table one, um, that is like the over and under column. And so the parentheses, if the number has parentheses, that means you need to gain that population. And if it doesn't have parentheses, it needs to move that population to a different district. And then moving on to page four, this is your current district's outlines, your current, your town's current district lines from 2020. And what, while, I'm sorry, can you take a question at this point? Yes. So while we're on the slide, one of the things that I noticed and one of the things that had come up as a question before was about the contiguousness requirement. So do you see where that, the literally the number five is? Yes. yes. Is it your understanding that that actually meets the contiguousness requirement? So the assumption here is that that is an annexed piece into the city. Is that accurate? Uh, I, 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 yes, but I, I guess my question is can contiguousness be established solely by a road? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And then moving on to page five of six. Table two and three represent the district benchmark demographics defined by the Department of Justice. Table two shows the total population by race in each district and table three shows the total voting age population by race in each district. And in our analysis, we use the information provided in table two to run our um, analysis about redistricting. And then the last few pages kind of re, um, restate the principles and things that we already discussed. So are there any other questions? Council doesn't have any questions right now about this. So what's the best way forward for us at this point? So you have a couple of options. Um, we typically recommend that council pass a resolution if you would like to utilize RFA services and I can send you a copy of, of an example uh, resolution that other municipalities have used um, and what that 
does is say we are going to follow these principles that RFA follows, um, the principles that Alan talked about. You pass a resolution, you let us know if you would like for us to provide you with a draft. Um, your deviation range was 27 percent uh, with something that low and with a population of, of what was it, 20,000? It shouldn't take more than two drafts for us to get you where you need to be. Alan's very good at, um, at one person, one vote, and, and getting the districts even out. Um, so the thing you have to understand, though, is we don't live in your city. So we can only look at it from a numbers perspective. We can sit in Columbia and move things around and shift things around and say, okay, you are now under the 5% deviation range. But what we don't know is your communities of interest. A community of interest can be uh, a subdivision. It can be a high school area where, you know, all the kids go to the same school. Um, it could be a voting precinct. It could be anything that you determine to be a community of interest. Um, I can tell you that typically what we see with municipalities is that they will say, go ahead and create a draft for us and we'll look at it and tell you where what we don't like and the reason for that is sometimes you just don't know until you see it um one thing to keep in mind is we can we have to when we go to move blocks we have to move the entire census block so it, it may mean that that people who are on one side of the street that have always been in a district are now in a different district than the other side of the street. It's just how the Census Bureau draws the blocks. Some blocks are small, some blocks are large. As far as we know, there is no rhyme or reason as to how the Census Bureau draws those blocks, but we have to work with what we're given. Um, we also would need to look at any annexations you may, may have had since um, the census was completed and then if you have any um, population that is within the municipal boundary but not within or within a municipal boundary but in a larger block um, so all that to say the next step would be for you to decide whether or not you want RFA to help um, and if you don't, that's completely fine. We're happy to send you all the information, all the data that we have. If you wanted to use outside an outside consultant, um, we can also, if you don't want RFA to draw the map, we can also, we'd be happy to do an analysis and a review over a map. Um, if you have in-house GIS, I'm not sure what your staff capabilities are there. Um, so if you wanted RFA to help, I would suggest passing that resolution and then letting us know in writing um, to that redistricting at rfa.sc.gov inbox uh, that you'd like for us to to create a draft. If you have any feedback already, we'd love to have that ahead of time. And if not, we can um, get a draft put together and send that over to you for review. You do have to have a public hearing, which can be you know at a regular council meeting. Um, and then you have to have two readings of your ordinance, and I can also provide you a, an example of an ordinance, um, and then you are good to go. Well, sorry, not good to go. You'd have to provide that ordinance back to us, and Alan would finalize the map and, and provide it back. Okay, time-wise, what's a typical process like this take? Um. So sometimes that just depends on bandwidth. At this point in time, I think, um, how quickly could you turn around and vote? Next week. So we can have a draft to you probably by, you know, end of next week. So there will probably be an email prior with additional census blocks if y'all are able to, if there are additional census blocks that need to be possibly incorporated. But I would ask you all first if you would want them included and then the draft okay so you can give us a draft you can give us a draft before we pass the resolution yes yep and you don't have to do a resolution most municipalities have it it's, it's optional it's up to whatever the rules are where you are at okay if, 
And I'm sorry, do you mean, when we're talking about a draft, do you mean a draft resolution or a draft map? Draft map. Okay. And it, is there any cost to the city for the service? No, sir. Mm -hmm. Does this process need to be completed before November? Is, is your next election in November? I believe so. Then yes. We don't have, there's not a city election, there's a national election. There's nothing that affects from the ward standpoint. Okay, so there's no council election in November? No. Is that accurate? That's correct. All right, then you would have until your next council, until the filing date for your next council election. Okay. So you've got some time. Are there any other questions that we can answer for you today? Well, here, here is one. If we had a special called election uh, to change the form of government, would this have to be finished before that? Uh, no, your form of government would need to be changed prior to us doing redistricting for you. Has to be done first, okay. Has to be done first, that's correct. Because I don't know what, what your change would be, but if it were to affect your districts, there would be no sense in us doing redistricting for you and then you changing your form of government and us having to come back and, and redo, if that makes sense. I don't think, I mean, that's not a Yeah, it's a citywide election and so it, would, it doesn't matter which ward you're in when you vote for that particular item that we're gonna have on there. It, it, if, if we have a special called election. It wouldn't matter for the special called election, but wouldn't, wouldn't the res the election that fall? I mean, because then wouldn't we be elected? Wouldn't we then have seven wards, no. an odd number of wards? No. no. Uh, the way I read, a district adjusted the lines, the boundary lines. I don't think it's going to be adding a ward. It's just adjusting no. the lines. That's the way I I interpret it. Right. The the what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. But let's say that we pass the change of form of government. That doesn't necessitate us going through a odd number of wards. <coughs> we would be, we would have. She would be the odd odd vote. I'd be the odd Did you hear that question? I'm sorry, can you repeat it? Yeah, we've had growth. This is on the 2020 census and we've had significant growth since then. Does that have any bearing? Yeah, so what we'll do, um, what Alan was discuss describing earlier about asking about additional census lots. So all studies have had, have had growth um, since the 2020 census pretty much that we've helped. And so what we do is we look at your current municipal boundary and that could include annexations, it could include more people in a census block. We can't really do anything for the census block. The data that we have is what we have, but if you've had growth as far as annexations, we will include the people from those areas and anything that's in your municipal boundary, we will include that may not have been included in this. And in regards to your change of form of government, I mean, are you adding a ward? Or are you making somebody at large? What's your? There's no intent to add a, add a ward or at large either. It's just uh, the wards will stay the same, still have okay. a mayor. And then, of course, the mayor is at large. And then uh, change of form of government to council manager is the. Uh -huh. 
what might okay. be, what might be on the or what was going to be on the ballot. Yeah, that would this would not affect that. So you could do that in in parallel. Okay. And if you're if you have uh, legal questions about that, you could probably reach out to Eric Scheidel at Municipal Association. He's really good about those sorts of things. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions we can answer answer for you this evening? All right, Catherine, Alan, thank you for the presentation. Uh, don't think we have any more questions. If we do, we'll, I got your email. And uh, okay. if you'll just go ahead and give us that draft map and then uh, a, corp a copy of the draft resolution as well, and we'll go ahead and pass that. Okay, sounds good. Thank you all, all have a good evening. You too, thank, thank you for thank your you. time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. So if we don't have any further questions on that, we can move on to our next topic, which is project updates by staff. So do you want to go ahead and start with that? I guess we can go with regular Zoom real quick. Yes. Yeah, I believe. Okay. Um, Podium. <laughs> I feel like I have a loud voice. I mean, I feel like that's what we did. Y'all are going to regret it. <laughs> um, no, I just want to say we were very excited from the Parks and Recreation standpoint for tonight's council meeting. I know it's not a long agenda, but it's going to be a very special presentation. I will have to leave here um, and go back down to the court, but we do have just some finger foods ready at 6 o'clock. We have our award recipients coming in. You can come say thank you, take some pictures. We're going to get the big pictures out of the way before council, um, and then Mr. Jim Headley is coming in, and he will do the presentation. Thank you to Jordan for helping us get everything uh, put up on the screens tonight. And so just looking forward to sharing all our accomplishments. Um, and that's pretty much what I got, unless anybody has questions. All right. Thank you. Okay, who wants to go next? Anybody have any questions for staff? No, just met with them. No, just met with them. Yes, we're going through our our budget, as everyone knows, and we've met with all the staff and made a few cuts. We've got a, quite a ways to go, but we're working on that, and uh, and um, we'll let you know how that progresses. progresses. Do we have anything else? Okay. Any questions? Do we want to go back to redistricting? Did you have discussion? Do, do we want to engage the services of RFA? In my opinion, we do. You feel differently? I don't know about you, but I do not have the qualifications to do what they do. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good change. I agree with Mr. Cash. Does everybody else, does anybody else have any concerns about that? Well, we can actually update it. I mean, the map in here is a correct. It's blank out the numbers. So the map, the map that she gives us, some if it's not in there, we'll you know we'll make the correction, have her make the correction. Mm -hmm. She said community interest. What does that mean? Well, is that what she was talking about having a public hearing maybe before we did that? I, th I think she was referencing. I think she was referencing. A like blocks, maybe everything around a high school stays together if they can, that type of thing. Anything we would know about the community that she wouldn't, you know, looking at it from outside the city that we may have more information on. I think that's the way I took what she said. That's why we're kind of curious about it. Anything else? Okay. I guess we're going to. Do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting?
One, one moment. <laughs> in, uh, the information that we were given, there's a Q&A section, what are communities of interest? And the answer is it is not a set standard for defining districts, but is considered as part of traditional redistricting principles. A community of interest could be a neighborhood, a community, a group of people that has common policy concerns as well as social and economic interests and would benefit from being maintained in a single district. Like an HOA maybe, because she talked about a street. A, a term of art rather than having a specific definition, but it, it's defined here in the, the material that we were given. Or explained, I don't know if it's defined, but it's explained. Anything else? We have a motion and a second. Do we have a second? Did I hear a second? Second. Okay. Meeting adjourned.